All right, if you're ready to get your geek on, this is the video for you. It's Weather for Weather Geeks on this final evening of October, otherwise known as Halloween. The weather not great today, but not too scary. This is, after all, the 30-year anniversary of the snowiest and coldest Halloween on record in our area. But today was just a chilly day. We got up to 45 this afternoon. We're putting a lid on the month. Temperature-wise, we're going to go to the record books at 2.9 degrees uh, warmer than the average. Now, that doesn't include today's number, so th that number might change just a little bit. We might go down to 2.8. Uh, but it's going to be an above average month and that's despite a pretty long stretch in the middle of the month of, of chilly weather but we started the month with lots of 80s we had 70s for four days in a row last week and so it all comes out in the wash as at least two and a half almost three degrees warmer than the average this follows a warmer than average month of september now of course the uh, summer season was not particularly hot at all um june was over a degree and a half cooler than the average. July a little bit warmer than the average, but August a little bit cooler than the average. Actually, this 2.9 degree departure for October, our biggest departure from average, since of course the very warm back-to-back -back winter months of January and February. In the rainfall department, it was a pretty typical month. We didn't have anything in the rain gauge today, and we finished the month uh, not counting maybe a little measurable precipitation this evening. We're gonna finish the month at about three and a half inches or so uh, for the month at the airport. That's about uh, quarter of an inch more than the average so really nothing to write home about precipitation wise although it every saturday uh, we had measurable precipitation and almost every sunday with the exception of the first sunday of the month we did have measurable precipitation uh, wednesdays were the dry day this time around all right i grabbed one screenshot before i started recording this is from a uh, odot camera out nor near the uh, toledo area now there's a lot of cameras out there we could have picked uh, any one of them and shown you something like this so with a candy coating of snow on the ground particularly the non-paved surfaces this initial band of snow showers moving through western ohio encountering some fairly warm road surfaces and it was still daylight when a lot of this fell so not too many problems on the roads even though the grassy surfaces certainly got covered and that's uh what's about to occur here i think as we head through the overnight which we'll of course talk about in a lot of detail here in the next couple of minutes low pressure spinning out of the chicago area right now this is a potent disturbance a lot of dynamics with it a lot of energy aloft and this will create a pretty unstable atmosphere across the area now as of about 7 10 this evening we had a initial band of precipitation that was all virga precipitation not reaching the ground a lot of this is a little more legitimate it's kind of a mixed bag of raindrops and chilly snowflakes pushing in and the uh, snow that whitened the ground out towards toledo is associated with a lot of this action though the kind of the deeper hues of blue out there with the lake effect component of this tonight uh the weather service office in cleveland did hoist winter weather advisories from cuyahoga county over into lake geauga ashtabula crawford and erie counties in pa this does not include our television viewing area even though we are going to see some snow overnight and this will be a very unstable setup you know lake water temperatures here on the final evening of october are in the 50s I think off of Cleveland, Lake Erie temperature is about 56. And the air, about 5,000 feet above our heads, will be in the upper teens to about 20 later on tonight. That's a big temperature difference. When it comes to lake effect, the temperature down here at the ground where we are is important, but it's perhaps more important what's going on upstairs, a couple of thousand or a handful of thousand feet above our heads. And when you have water temperatures in the 50s and air temperatures like this at the 5,000 foot level, that's very unstable. Yeah, there could be some thunderstorm, some lightning strikes especially up near the lake later on tonight. A primer, a reminder of uh, lake effect snow. It's all about that temperature difference between the lake and the air that's flowing over it. Also has to do with some terrain differences. Of course, it's pretty hilly terrain once you get away from the lakeshore. Um, south southeast of Cleveland, up into the heart of wine country, up into Geauga County, up near Chardon, even over into Ashtabula County. Once you're inland a handful of miles, it's pretty hilly. Once you get a little bit farther south and east than that, the... Uh, topography is a little flatter and so we don't typically see the higher amounts of lake effect snow once you get down into our true television viewing area um, even though there is kind of a secondary snow belt i would say that comes down to about i-80 in our viewing area but by far and away the heaviest amounts of snow climatologically speaking are right on the on the crest of that hillier terrain just inland from the lake where the moisture gets wrung out the air flowing down from those higher uh, elevations uh, tends to downslope a little bit and that tends to eat away a little bit at lake effect precipitation and that's again why our lake effect amounts are typically lower by some degree in our viewing area as opposed to the heart of the primary snow belt in geauga county lake county 
Ashton Buell County as well. In that primary snow belt, someone's gonna, probably going to get three or four, maybe even five inches of snow uh, later on tonight. So there could be some pretty impressive snowfall rates, especially uh, around one or two in the morning up you know, just a few miles inland from the lakeshore. In our TV viewing area, I think this will be enough to uh, coat the ground and maybe even we get a slushy inch or two outside. Outside chance of three in our viewing area, especially maybe way up here um, on the northern edges of our viewing area. But I think a you know, common accumulation is going to be half an inch, three quarters of an inch, inch or two on the higher end. Um, best chance for those higher end totals will be about where you would expect with lake enhanced and lake effect precipitation, uh, mostly around and north of Interstate 80. Now, as we get into the daylight hours tomorrow, a lot of this is going to occur in the middle of the night tonight. We're going to sleep through it, right? Now, if you're an early morning riser, uh, if you're heading off to work at 5, 6 a.m. before daybreak, there could be some slick surfaces, certainly. Uh, more traditional, head off to work in school hours, 7.38, 8.39. Um, precipitation at that point is going to be very light, very spotty, not much more than flurries. But I can't rule out some you know slick surfaces still being out there. For the rest of the day, flurries most likely in the morning, maybe a rain or a snow shower through mid-afternoon, then the sky clears out by tomorrow night, leading to a hard freeze tomorrow night. We'll be well down into the 20s. We'll call it partly to mostly sunny both Thursday and Friday. Warm front lifts off to the north, and the air mass that this front's going to usher in is nothing special. It's just a little more seasonable back in the mid-50s by Friday afternoon into that same neighborhood coming up on our Saturday. Quick look at the uh, longer range. Here's the 6 to 10 day, the 8 to 14 day, and the weeks 3 and 4 outlooks from the uh, Climate Prediction Center. Uh, the trends with the modeling over the last 5 or 6 days have been cooler in November. A couple of weeks ago, if you would ask me, and I probably speculated some on this video, I thought November would end up being a warmer than average month. No longer looks like that'll be the case. Um, the first couple of weeks of the month, the cooler days are probably going to outnumber the warmer days as we get into you know you know kind of this general pattern with more ridging in the west and troughing in the east the signal kind of washes out some weeks three and four as we get closer to say thanksgiving um higher confidence in that it ends up being a drier than average month even though it starts kind of active i think drier signals will start to take over as we head deeper into the month we'll do an overall November outlook coming up on Wednesday evening, the first evening of the month. And climatologically speaking, of course, it's another month where our averages are falling quickly. Average high today and tomorrow is in the mid-50s. At our average high on the final day of meteorological fall, November 30th, is 44 degrees. December 1st is meteorological winter, the start of it anyway. And coming up next week, we're going to talk about meteorological winter, the months of December, January, and February. Temperatures for those month are, months, I should say. Our snow forecast is always first flake to last flake, and usually for us that's somewhere between late October and early to mid-April. Um, so we're going to break down what to expect this year in terms of uh, temperatures and precipitation and snow compared to the average next week on November the 9th. That's a Thursday evening on TV, online, same place you're watching Weather for Weather Geeks. We'll get that video online by mid-evening next Thursday. Meantime, thanks for watching tonight's Weather for Weather Geeks. Stay safe out there tonight if you'll be traveling overnight or early tomorrow morning. Sure and tune in to WFMJ today. Andrew DePaulo will keep you up to date, up to date I should say, on what's going on first thing on Wednesday morning.